So when we look at how these metabolic pathways work, what I really want to think about is the fact that you don't just eat a bowl of glucose for breakfast. Some of you might, but I'm assuming that most of you don't. So we've got to find other ways to get energy out that isn't just from straight glucose because we eat carbohydrates and proteins and fats. Okay, these are really good sources for making ATP. Nucleic acids are not as good at, at this process, and most of the nucleic acids that we ingest, we actually use to build DNA and RNA. So we don't want to use them for energy conversion type processes. So if we put in sugars, carbohydrates, fine, they're going to go through glycolysis like we saw before. Okay. We put in fats, it turns out that you can actually put these fats into different locations in the cell respiration cycle and have them be very, very efficient at this conversion process of energy. So you can actually put fats into different places depending on how you broke down the fat. Proteins the same way, depending on how you break it down, what its intermediate polymers are will determine where it fits into the cycle. I just want to show you that we don't, we don't eat just glucose. Um, fats are actually much, much higher in energy than sugar. The problem is getting the energy out of fats is very, very demanding on ATP, and we've got to worry about long term how that kind of fits in. So. When we look at triglycerides, for example, we talked about you would actually break those down into fatty acids and glycerol, and then glycerol we'd actually put into glycolysis. Fatty acids can go straight into the citric acid cycle and then start to break down things. Um, the fatty acids can actually be broken down straight into acetyl-CoA and go straight into the citric acid cycle. There are lots of these things that go on to fuel more efficient energy conversions. So then we start looking at the fact that we've got to use ATP to do all of these processes. Remember, ATP had to be put into citric acid cycle, into glycolysis, into all of these stages to be able to do this. And the whole idea is to build more ATP so that we can build more polymers and eventually build more cells and tissues and so on. So this constant kind of back and forth of availability of energy, conversion of energy from polymers back into polymers in you is really pretty amazing um, that we're as efficient as we are at this process. And check this, about 98% of our actual energy reserves are fats. So you are not storing a lot of sugars, you store very little of sugars, and ATP is not a good long-term storage molecule. ATP breaks down quickly, And so when we talk about long-term storage, we want to talk about fat. We don't want to talk about ATP.